Hi guys, my name is Pat Bonbaro, and uh, this is the painting that we're going to do today. And uh, people have asked me about uh, uh, how to paint clouds, uh, some tricks on how to do that. And so as, as you watch the process of me painting it, hopefully it'll help you uh, when you paint. So without further ado, let's go to the painting. All right, we're gonna do some some clouds, uh, sky with uh, some sun rays, and uh, sort of like a stormy, stormy uh, kind of sky. Actually, it's it's raining outside right now, and uh, I didn't pay for that sound effect, but it's just natural, and uh, you know, hopefully, it adds to the uh, to the mood. So we're gonna get started by uh, mixing ultramarine blue. and some black we're gonna add some purple and it's pretty dry right now so you can see how that's going on there's no shine And right off, right off the bat, I'm gonna start indicating the sun rays. And I'm gonna put the source of the sun that way. So right away, there's the suggestion of sun rays. Adding some more blue. That would be ultramarine blue. I'm using a uh, a Bob Ross. What is this? Half-sized round. I'm not sponsored by Bob Ross Ink or anything. I just I like this brush. So I use whatever works. I'm going to use a clean brush, which would be the same brush. I think with the same brush, I changed my mind. With the same brush, I'm going to add some brown which is actually called raw umber. And this would be for my stormy clouds. It's gonna work like the shadows of the, the highlights, uh, the shadows for the clouds.
not going to be talking all throughout the, the video. So while I'm quiet, enjoy the music. just sort of distribute the blue throughout. A little bit of purple. And dramatic skies are created by having a uh, strong contrast in the clouds. So I'm building up the shadows. So when I put the highlights, it will show up. But I always tell my students, without the shadows, the light the highlights won't show up. So just randomly putting the shadows. Again, that's raw umber with blue. So I'm going to use some yellow and I'm going to desaturate the yellow because yellow can be a little bit too bright. A little bit of white there, white. Add some orange to that, same brush.
We'll bring down the clouds so it doesn't look like a hard line. So the orange is going up to the brownish and the brownish is coming down to the orange. some weight and it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of that orange into that white because white by itself is uh, it doesn't look good for landscape paintings it should be uh, tinted with a little bit of orange or yellow or even a little bit of purple but not pure white. So this will serve as highlights to the clouds. This will give dimension. We'll see how this works out uh, if my contrast is strong enough to, for it to be a dramatic sky. But we could always go, go back and add some of the, uh, the dark blue or the dark gray, I mean, and the shadows. Again, the higher the contrast, the more dramatic the sky. So it just depends on how, how much drama you want. So we will add more highlights, more white, and I'm building up the white highlights. So every time I add a layer, it adds a dimension to the clouds. You notice I'm doing a circular motion. And so, you know, clouds are kind of like that. Cumulus clouds are, there are different kinds of clouds. Today it's cumulus clouds. That's what we're doing. Oops. I accidentally touched that, so I'm gonna fix it by doing this. Some little circles, some bigger circles, sort of going up and down, up. So I'm going to add some red to closer to the horizon here. Uh, some red, some cad orange and cadmium red and just add it down here. work 
to make things not so symmetrical because in nature things are balanced but they are not symmetrical. Symmetrical is for graphic arts and actually that that is my background so as I have a habit of making things all symmetrical and even and I have to consciously not do that. So if I have a little bit more red on this side, it's okay. And if I have a little bit more yellow on this side, I think this yellow is a little bit too strong, so I'm gonna desaturate that by adding white. And that is perfectly okay to do that. We're always adjusting. We are always making adjustments as we go. this warm color up here so that we have some unity in, uh, in our color. Just subtle. Using the same brush, I just brought that up here. Bring it up here. Okay, so since we just have the sky, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add uh, uh, just some kind of landscape down here so that, so that we could see, so, so that you all could see uh, how it is, uh, how the land is relating to the sky and, uh, and all that. Because without that, it, it could look like you're up in the sky, you know, like you're flying, but we wanna, we wanna ground it so down here, I'm going to add land. I actually learned this uh, style of painting from Stuart Davis and it's quite enjoyable to do. Where it's, you're, you're just making some strokes and letting the brush uh, do some marks.
So it's all about uh, creating an illusion. Uh, so with values, dark and light. So when we have dark and light, we give the brain uh, the ability to imagine things. So <laughs> we're gonna attempt to make different values and create some texture that make it uh, look like there's some detail going on there. So that's why the style is actually really fun. Although the video is really all about clouds, uh, I can't help but just kind of show this because this is really quick. You can use some dabs, more texture. Again, trying to create an illusion of something. The brain will figure something out. You give it enough information, it'll do something. It'll, it, it'll create a scene. So you just need to come up with uh, some light and dark values and then there you go so that will be enough I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit I'm gonna do, I'm gonna smooth these out a little bit. That's what's so cool about oil painting is you got time to blend things. Things aren't very smooth. You just take this little mop brush and smooth it out a little bit. Just really light touch or <laughs> you'll end up blending everything and then then you don't see anything anymore you don't, there's no distinction between your lines and so forth we don't want to do that we just want to barely barely blend it so i think that's good for that and you can actually blend with a palette knife
some big circular motion and some small to add a little bit of yellow to our white. So with the stormy clouds that we're painting, it's actually raining quite hard outside. So I planned it that way. I'm gonna blend it a little bit. So I live in Columbia, Tennessee. And like I said, over here it's raining. Uh, comment below where you guys are from. Where, where are you watching from? It's really neat how to think that uh, this video could be watched in any part of the world. Just gonna blend this top right here so that it's nice and blended. using purple or uh, manganese violet and some raw umber for uh, just darkening the shadows. And when we do that, it just brings out the highlights better. That's what it does. And I'm just putting it in roughly right now. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, soften it up again with the mop. So I'm twirling it 
to get random shapes. Now I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue with my raw umber. Have to have no fear when when you do these things. You get the best shapes that way. And if you don't, well, it's just a painting. Make another one. Okay, now I'm going to blend it. A little blending goes a long way. So I'm going to do a little bit of blending. I added some shadows to create more drama and now I'm just blending it out. And we're uh, about close to the end of the video. So hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, and you learned something maybe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. And uh, have a good one and try not to get pain on you. See you next time.